This video is brought to you by Manscaped. Stick around to hear more about the discount they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. Okay, this video may very well get memory hold, but it's an interesting topic and I felt like digging into it. Let's begin with context. COVID-19 swept across the globe in early 2020. The disease is largely believed to have originated in Wuhan, China, while conspiracy theories abound as to its true origin, but far more important than its history is its economic impact. COVID-19 spurred what can only be described as draconian government response. Lockdowns, mandates, expanded emergency powers, and a dramatic increase in governmental authority. On top of this, COVID-19 carried with it substantial adjustments to market sentiment and industry profitability. Example, Zoom Video Communications Incorporated exploded from a $100 stock valuation to nearly $600, and has since come crashing back down to earth and reality because COVID allowed for their product to see dramatically increased adoption while lockdowns and work from home mandates were in effect, but in reality, the company really isn't that profitable. For some, COVID-19 was a horrible, depressing, and thoroughly negative phenomenon, but for others, it was unbelievably profitable, beneficial, and lucrative. There is a long list of such companies, but for today, I want to focus on three in particular. Those companies are Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Merck, all of which are prominent pharmaceutical giants operating in the United States. These three companies were responsible for a very large portion of the fast-tracked vaccine production for COVID-19, with Pfizer and AstraZeneca releasing their own formulation, while Merck assisted Johnson & Johnson with manufacture and distribution for a third version of the vaccine. Generally speaking, the bulk of COVID-19 vaccines came from four individual companies, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, and Moderna. Just keep that in mind. Before going further, it's time, once again, for one of the oldest and most supportive sponsors that this channel has ever had, Manscaped. Men's hygiene and grooming has come a long way in the past few years, with no better example than the Platinum Package 4.0. Pretty much my entire bathroom is covered in Manscaped products. I personally use and endorse all of them, so once again, happy to have them on board as a sponsor. There is a 2-in-1 shampoo and conditioner, aluminum-free deodorant, all of their products are paraben-free, cruelty-free, and vegan, if you care about that, plus the centerpiece, as always, the Lawnmower 4.0, as well as the Weed Whacker Nose Hair Trimmer, which is actually my personal favorite part of the package. There's more, a bunch of products, but tying them all together is the Peak Hygiene Plan, where you get all the refills and product replenishments sent straight to your door. Very convenient. If you want a special discount, as well as two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and a pair of anti-chafing boxer briefs, which are genuinely the first ones I pick up after any load of laundry, they're my favorites, you can use the link down below and code UPPER at checkout for 20% off and free international shipping. Again, link down below in the description and code UPPER at checkout for 20% off, two extra gifts, and free international shipping. Big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring the channel. Alright, pretty straightforward thus far, but why does it matter? Next, I'd like to draw attention to a piece of legislation called the False Claims Amendment Act of 2021. This amendment is aimed at the original False Claims Act, which is essentially whistleblower protection for employees who expose illegal activity within a corporation to the government. The act itself is meant to protect these whistleblowers from retaliation, wrongful termination, and generally speaking, it's a way to ensure that there are defenses in place so that employees can speak out when they are witnesses of illegal, fraudulent, or deceptive practices. Reckless disregard is a legal term used here, and the original act also encompasses the idea that making false or deceptive claims about a federal healthcare program or providing kickbacks and incentives in a fraudulent way are punishable crimes. Examples given are things like billing a customer for services that are never rendered, making false statements in order to get payments from customers, or falsely representing other facts in an effort to defraud customers or the government. A critical portion of this is that the False Claims Act opens up the ability for everyday customers to file a lawsuit on behalf of the government. These are called key tom suits, which is an abbreviation of the Latin phrase key tom pro domino rege quam pro se ipso in hac parte sequitur. I probably butchered that, but whatever. The phrase, loosely translated, equates to he who sues on behalf of the king as well as for himself. Essentially, the Justice Department can pursue its own cases, of course, but everyday citizens can also file lawsuits on behalf of the government to recoup damages if a company has been deceptive, and just to showcase that this is indeed extremely important, during 2021 alone, $5.6 billion in settlements and judgments were awarded, enabled, and protected by this particular act. Bottom line here, the False Claims Act is a corporate accountability program. It's designed to protect the American people, and it carries penalties for deception and fraud with measurable results over the past few years, but there's a catch. I won't go too in-depth here, mostly because it would make the video thoroughly uninteresting and practically unwatchable due to boredom, but over the past many years, actually, 
the False Claims Act has lost some of its efficacy. It turns out there is a way around this law, which many companies have been successfully using to avoid settlements and penalties, where continued payments by the government is seen as a sort of escape hatch. Basically, a fraud case can be dismissed if the government continues to make payments to the contractor, meaning that a giant company, with a friend on the inside of the government somewhere, which has been deceptive or fraudulent, can get these cases thrown out if they are a long-term and continued partner of the government. It has to do with materiality, but the gist of it is that the original False Claims Act has been severely hampered by recent court decisions. However, there's a solution. Enter the Amendment Act of 2021. This amendment would seek to expand the False Claims Act and eliminate this escape hatch, if you will, or at least shrink it in relative size. The amendment is bipartisan and would seek to reaffirm the original premise of the False Claims Act, which is protecting American taxpayers from fraud in government contracting and procurement. Sounds good, right? Yes, to some. But to others, not at all. I'd like to draw your attention now to the second largest settlement in history under the False Claims Act, which was $2.2 billion as a result of healthcare fraud in one individual settlement leveled against none other than Pfizer. In fact, looking a little more closely, AstraZeneca, Merck, Johnson & Johnson, and Pfizer have collectively been penalized over $6.5 billion under the False Claims Act alone since 2008. All four of these companies have been hit with mid nine figure or even low 10 figure settlements for healthcare fraud, deceptive advertising, off label promotion, and illegal kickbacks. In the case of Pfizer in particular, they were issuing kickback promotions to incentivize healthcare providers to over prescribe their medications and had made deceptive claims to the government in order to have their products included in government programs. Basically, they were deceiving everyone so that more people would be given medication that they did not need or that did not work for that purpose. Fantastic. So how does it all come together and craft a single cohesive picture? Here's how. American politics is infected with a concept called lobbying. Lobbying is soft serve bribery where instead of buying a desired result directly, you buy influence to get a desired result. It's a not quite the same thing, but the same thing type situation, and lobbying is rampant in American government. Huge companies will routinely spend millions or tens of millions of dollars to influence the outcome of pending legislation, but when doing this, for the most part, there are ways to obfuscate your lobbying through anonymous donations behind shell companies, funds, and organizations. Typically, when doing this, there are disclosures. Those disclosures for the companies that aren't successfully and deceptively hiding how they buy our political process contain information on which individual pieces of legislation a company is targeting. Now, remember, the False Claims Act, which has been used to punish AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, and Merck to the tune of billions, has an amendment on the schedule. If you dig through the required disclosure forms, you find something very interesting. Pfizer, Merck, and AstraZeneca are spending hefty amounts of money on lobbying directly against the False Claims Amendment Act. Three companies that benefit more than ever before in history from government contracts are spending obscene amounts of money to stop an amendment from passing that would help protect American taxpayers from fraud by government contractors. And all three of them have been hit with billions in collective settlements and lawsuits by that very same initial law. What's worse, the American Hospital Association is also lobbying against this amendment, requiring the simple question, why? A global pandemic sweeps across the world. Giant pharmaceutical companies obtain government backing and contracts larger than they have ever seen before in history. Four of those companies, I'm sure there are others, but I'll just stick to the ones that I researched myself for today. Four of those companies have previously been sanctioned by a specific law called the False Claims Act. That law is seemingly losing its efficacy recently, and thus an amendment is on the table to protect American taxpayers and their interests. While the same companies convicted of fraud under that law spend millions of dollars to influence our politicians into shutting it down. Meanwhile, we are being sold a vaccine that is politically divisive under the best of circumstances, largely developed by the same companies attempting to bribe our government into killing legislation that can hurt them for committing crimes after they were penalized for committing fraud by that very same law. 
And yet, we're supposed to sit here and say, well, they did it in the past, they lied about what the drugs could do, about what they were, and offered illegal kickbacks to hospital staff in order to over-prescribe the medications for things it didn't actually treat, as they defrauded the government in the process. But this time, it's definitely 100% legit and real and above board, even though they are trying to kill the one piece of legislation that actually managed to hold them accountable before in the past. Everyone questioning it is a dangerous anti-vax cons conspiracy theorist. Oh my god, don't question them. Yeah, that's the way. I know, I know, you filthy anti-vaxxer. This one is going to cause a bit of a stir, but think of it this way. I'm not saying that vaccines aren't real, or effective, or useful. I have a measles vaccine, a polio vaccine, etc, etc. I'm just saying that when a pharmaceutical company has been convicted of fraud under a law, and now tries to kill a much-needed amendment to that law by spending money on our politicians, as they receive more money than ever before in history from the government, and have previously been deceptive about what their products do, maybe, just maybe, we should start asking questions. Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Merck are actively trying to subvert the political process and kill a piece of legislation that might actually hold them accountable and protect American taxpayers. If you want to trust them, go ahead. Your choice, that's the story. Links down below, specifically Patreon and Locals for monthly support, also Odyssey, a YouTube platform alternative, merch, social media, another YouTuber to check out, Manscaped, the video sponsor, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.